We have to be fighting this now. And I tried to lay out some ideas and thoughts for this summer. And some of the experience and the lessons that we've had with Stop Patriarchy standing up and fighting back. And I'll tell you, people who've been part of this know. But others, you should come out with us and you should be part of making this happen and also seeing the results of this. When we're out there with this, where is this? Women are not bitches, hoes, punching bags, and incubators. Mm-hmm. Or we're out there, we've done this street theater where we have these faces of the women who died from illegal abortions and we have people posing in, in bloody pants and, and dying in, in the subways and, and, lots of, and somebody else yelling and saying, hey, you need to stop, this is what happens when women don't have abortion, they die, they're taking this right away, we're making a big scene. People, like we've met hundreds of people this way. And people come up, and a lot of times they do, they tell us, you know, it was last week somebody in, in Bay Area, I was just hearing this, who went out and did this street theater, um, somebody came up and they were very angry, and they said, how dare you say women are oppressed here, you don't know what it's like in India, it's so much worse that women aren't oppressed here, women are oppressed other places, and he was really, uh, he was really indignant. And five minutes later, a woman walks by and says, oh my God, my aunt was killed by her partner. And two minutes later, another person comes by and talks about a relative who was murdered by her boyfriend. And, you know, these are stories that women carry around with them. You know, it's the, it's the ugly side of the, how dare you? <laughs> no, who was telling the story? The guys who come and say, calm down, women. Calm down, women. <laughs> That's the refrain we get a lot. Calm down, women. And then we get a lot of ugly shit, too. But then there's the people who come and they tell these stories they've never told anybody. And they come and tell us about their best friend who was 16 and found out she was pregnant in Mississippi Hmm. in the 60s and didn't want to tell her parents, so she killed herself. Hmm. And this woman's carried this story for years. And who would she tell this to? When would this ever come up? You know, and so these people, they come and they tell us this stuff. And they share with us this stuff. And that's very deep, and it's out there. It's like if you think about one in three women are raped or brutalized in their lives, that's half the people you're crossing on the street. These women are everywhere, and the men who care about them are everywhere. And frankly, the men who are doing this are everywhere. And we tap into all of that, which right most mm-hmm. days you're walking around, and it seems like such a, such a civilized society. <laughs> that wouldn't be happening here, but it's happening everywhere. And so we rip that open, and all of a sudden you start seeing it everywhere, and people start finding this, and this really matters. You know, it really matters, and it really matters. I just want to plug this really hard. It really matters when people join with us to go out and do this. It matters because people then see you as part of this. They need to see people doing this. It's very hard to break out of this if you're all by yourself and you don't even know that you're oppressed and you just think it's your own personal choices or your own bad luck or maybe you did something to make this man angry or maybe you know you really shouldn't have been so foolish the way you're told to have stayed and had that extra drink and end up being taken advantage of or raped or assaulted. There's all kinds of things that women are made to feel and think after they go through all the horrors that they go through or they don't experience those direct horrors but they experience the the rape curfew that every woman lives with, that you know you can't be out at night. You have to be home by a certain time. I mean, what kind of society has half its population know that every minute of their lives they have to calculate where they're walking and what time of day it is and who else is on the street because they could could be raped or assaulted. So this is like going on all the time. It's very hard for people to break out of that by themselves. And it's very hard to stand up against it or to see why it would make a difference. But you go out with Stop Patriarchy, you go out with a crew, you go out there with people who've done this before, and even if all you're doing is holding a sign or standing there and handing out flyers to people who stop, you're part of this scene. You're part of letting people see that that there's a force that's not taking this shit. And that's attractive to other people. It breaks something open. And one of the first things people told us, I've thought a lot about this, one of the first things that people told us when we first started this movement is women would get involved and they would be so angry with this shit they've been choking on their whole lives. And a lot of women told us, look, I don't know if I can keep it together. If I come, in, if I come out with you, you know, I get so angry, I don't know if I'm going to break. And one of the things I think is that we, weren't, we didn't give them enough of an outlet. Let's be real. We went out and then we'd be a few more months before we'd go out again. And then we'd get it together and we'd say, don't worry, we'll call you back later. 
There needs to be a force that's out there relentlessly all the time so that people go, oh, there is a place for me. And if I walk through that door and unsettled, this one woman told us, it's like she'd been, she'd been molested for years as a, as a little girl. And she told us, she says, you know, I feel like I've lived my whole life, and I think she spoke for many women. She said, I feel like I lived my whole life with that whole experience stacked really neat, mm. very, very oh. neatly, up very, very fragile, like Jenga or something, you know, the game. She said, it's stacked right there, and I live my whole life trying not to knock it over, because if it comes undone, I'm going to come undone. Mm -hmm. And so I was afraid to come too close to you guys when I saw you. Mm -hmm. Because I thought, if this breaks, I don't know if I'll ever be able to put it back together. Mm -hmm. And you think about millions of women living this way. Now, there needs to be a place where they know it should break, and there's another side of that. Mm -hmm. There's somewhere to go with that, and there's somewhere to live with that that's like... You know, we have this slogan, break the chains, unleash the fury of women as a mighty force for revolution. We want that anger. We want that outrage. There's a place for it, but we have a responsibility. And everybody here, I'm really arguing for this. Come and be part of standing up and fighting and making there actually be a place for that. Every fucking week, every multiple times a week. People need to know, stop patriarchy. Where are they going to pop up next? Who yours needs to be nervous, okay? The poor <laughs> need to be nervous. The fucking fascist churches need to be wondering, are they coming to ours this week? Because, you know, some of these women that we've been trying to brainwash in Sunday school might start to question us. Some of them are going to be with us. We have to be going out there all the time. And everybody here, it would make a huge difference. Thir you know, Wednesday next week, we need to be very powerful on Union Square. We want 100 people in these, in these uh, bloody outfits. We want a hundred lining Union Square. We want to read the names of the women. Everybody here should bring friends. Really argue with them. Bring your mother, bring your sister, bring your best friend, bring your cousin, bring your brother. Argue with them and get them out here with you. And we need to line that place, but then we need to be going out all summer long. And it needs to be like popping up. We started a few. Some, some young woman we met last week came out a couple times. She met us one day and she came out again and then she went and wrote a blog about it. We want this popping up on all the blogs. We want this popping up in the buzz, you know, on social media. Wow, they're out here again. Where are they next? And around the country this is happening. This needs to be, and I'm talking about in a matter of a couple of months, like the course of a summer, in a matter of a few weeks, this is on the radar. It's not just something that a few of us are doing a few times and really seeing, wow, this strikes a deep chord. It'd be really good if we could do something with that. We're going to do something with that. And so I'm really calling on everybody here to be part of this, to make this your mission for the summer. All right. It makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. <laughs>